trip behind the scenes with future country rock blues kings and queens discover them first with palm mash tv palm mash tv well hello there is palm mash tv time again i'm palm mash your host of course we're glad that you could join us yet again for another interview. And uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. But uh, as always, don't forget to uh, subscribe here on YouTube by clicking that button and hitting the notification bell. And you're always going to get the latest interviews whenever they become available. And uh, check out the comments section and leave us a comment. And also uh, check out one of the comments because we got caps and t-shirts that I'm sure you'll enjoy. And uh, if you have... Um, Facebook, go to facebook.com forward slash Palm Ash TV, which is our official Facebook page, and feel free to like the page, inboxes, comment everything you see, and uh, I'm sure that you'll enjoy doing that, and we'd love to hear from you there. And um, go ahead and email us at palmashtv, all one word, obviously, at gmail.com. And uh, if you're a fan or a, a, or a band or a solo artist, either one of those three, just send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll tell you how to get on the show. And uh, remember, we're on Roku, channel Small World TV, every night, at, every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Central. And uh, so check us out there. And we have an official address, um, www.1, that's the number one, micmusic.net, or slash Paul Mash TV. And uh, we'll recap all that again for you in the closing credits at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. In just a moment, we're going to have Malachi Joe from uh, Gilbertville, Massachusetts. Very talented artist and uh, musician. And uh, we'll talk to him in just a minute. But here's yet again another quick word from Click Jam. Don't go away. We got history. Okay, and it's time for our interview. And today, with uh, from Gilbertville, Massachusetts, we have Malachi Joe. Thanks for joining us, uh, Malachi Joe. Hi, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. We're glad that you have me on here today. Uh, 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 tell us a little bit about uh, how it began for you as far as being an artist. I mean, I'm sure it happened when you were real young. Maybe you just fell into it. Everybody has their own story, so let's hear your story. Um, well, as an artist would be just that that would be the songwriting part of it. I don't consider myself really a singer, but I consider myself kind of like more of an entertainer, performer. And, um, and if somebody likes my voice, well, that's good too. But that's not like, hey, I'm a singer, you know. Um, I'm more of a bass player, play guitar second, and then drums, keyboards after that, you know. So I don't consider myself, but I, I enjoy it. I have fun with it. And uh, it allows me to, to go around the world and play music and meet people and experience uh, that type of life. So, Okay, well, how, uh, how long ago did you decide you wanted to do this? I mean, have you always wanted to be one since you were a child? Or, uh, no, no. Uh, I started playing bass in 1985, so that's mm -hmm. how old I am. And um, went through various bands, cover bands, all the way through. My first song was The Trooper. By Iron Maiden and uh, Ozzy Osbourne and mm. uh, Black Sabbath and uh, Stones, of course, Dylan. So I started, you know, learning basically the basics on these cover songs on the bass and uh, played that for many years. Picked up the guitar, um, I don't know when exactly, and uh, started filling with that. But I got inspired by my dad, and he used to pay, play three songs. Uh, lay down your head, Tom Dooley. Uh, when the saints go marching in, and you are my sunshine. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, we'd sit wherever we were, which was basically. Um, I grew up on a carnival, and my dad and parents were carnies, and uh, we used to travel around in the summer, and they'd have the games and the rides and everything. And uh, so, on our off time, my dad would break out the guitar and he'd play his three songs, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and then put it put it away. Um, so anyways, so actually songwriting, I think, was right around 
2009 was when I got serious with it. Uh, I moved on a sailboat with my uh, wife and kids. We ended up living on it for nine years in the Caribbean, sailing around. And um, so I was playing on these beach gigs and stuff, and uh, the boat's name happened to be Malachi. And it came, there's a long story behind the boat, but uh, anyways, so we got this sail, uh, catamaran with the sails on it, but no engine. So the only way we could get around was to sail on it. And so we ended up in from St. Croix, St. Thomas, and uh, I, they didn't have any music on, Saint, on uh, Water Island in St. Thomas. So one day I decided to just start playing music. And before you knew it, we had guys coming over. We started a band and blah, blah, blah. We had pig roast and we started with having four people to, to a couple hundred people and they all come from the different islands and stuff. And we had a blast with it. And um, so then I started writing music on the boat and I got a little task cam recorder and um, started writing and publishing music from the boat and to iTunes and all that. And um, so that's basically how it got started. How it got serious was when I went to Nashville in 2011 and uh, started meeting people. And that was fun. Did a recording session with uh, Fred Vale, which is the owner of Treasure Isle Recorders in Nashville. Um, the guys in my session played with Jason Aldean and all these major stars forever. Uh, Neil Diamond, Garth Brooks, you know, so they, so basically they actually go on the road and travel with these guys, play with them, whatever. And then they helped me do mine. So I did four song demo there and uh, it did really well in the independent charts, blah, blah, blah. And um, I was basically trying to sell, sell the music and everybody's like, Joe, you just might as well sing it and just do your thing. And if it sells good, if not, whatever. And uh, so I just started producing more and publishing more and, and, Blah, 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 100, 100 songs later. Not 400, not 800, just uh, around 100. But it's, it's every day I'm writing new songs. And so we started doing these live sessions on YouTube. And they're live. It's just me and a drummer. There's the drums over here. Let's see? Yeah. And um, so anyways, John comes over. He was retired for 30 years, hadn't played drums in 30 years, but he comes over and he's actually doing really well on the drums. And uh, we're putting those songs together on the YouTube. And uh, we just do a live um, guitar, drum, sing, and then I'll put a bass to it later on. And, uh, and that's it there. But it's just fun, therapeutic. And uh, of course, we're writing new music. Hmm, okay. Well, that, that is quite a story there, uh, Malachi Joe. I appreciate uh, you sharing that with us. Uh, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about your influences? I think you already mentioned a few of them, but if you had any more, maybe you can mention those as well. Yeah, basically that was it. I told you the whole story in a nutshell, probably from start to finish. <laughs> but uh, like the Rolling Stones, Black Sabbath, Pink Floyd was a very big influence on both Roger Waters and uh, Gilmore as far as bass and guitar, Moody Blues. Uh, a lot of my favorites there. Um, I do love country music too because I grew up with that with my dad and that was Willie Nelson and all those guys, Hank Williams, junior, senior. Um, I like rap. I like Americana. I like all the different genres. So that's why I write in all the different styles. So if you listen to every all my songs, they're all a different genre mm. and they all have different stories and they all have different you know, and each one has a story, which is really interesting. And if you really listen to the words, you'll, you either get it or you don't, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, um, some of those you mentioned, you know, they really are um, uh, legends in their own time. You know, like you said, Willie Nelson and so forth. And uh, mm -hmm. so uh, those sure. are, and, then, and then that's what, that's what Paul Mash TV is about too, is different genres, because I do all genres on the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why not, you know, but, uh, but in order to get specific, they say you have to be good at only one thing, you know, so that's why you pick a genre and then you say, okay, I'm country and this is how I'm going to focus it and this is how I'm going to market it, produce it. You just create the character for it. You got to dress for it because right now, you know, I'm not wearing a costume, but if you're, if you're really a showman, you're going to create a show. You're not going to just sit there and sing and look pretty. I mean, you know, that works, but it only works for so long. You know, and then you have to take it to the next step and then the next step. You know, it depends on what you want to do with your music. Yeah, that, that's a good point there. 
Um, well, well, tell us how you can uh, we can find your music. I mean, I'm sure it, it might be on all streaming for, uh, platforms. Maybe it's a physical copy that you have. But uh, let us know. We'd love to hear about it. The, I'll tell you what. The best thing you want to do is just Google search Melakai Joe. Now, the hardest thing to do is spell it correctly. <laughs> Seriously, Melakai Joe, how do you spell it? If you didn't know how to spell it already, because, you know, you've seen it a hundred times or read it, but usually it's M, they spell it M-A-L-M-O-L, -L, whatever, whatever, which is really Polynesian for Song of the Sea. Because remember, my first boat was a catamaran, and that was the title of the boat. And so when I was living on it, people on the beach used to start calling me Melakai Joe, because I was Joe, captain of this boat. And I was producing the music off. So that just became a stage thing because basically I had an acoustic and, uh, and I was doing, you know, beachy music, stuff like that. You know, the Jimmy Buffett's and all that, Kenny Chesney's and all that stuff, you know. So that, that was fun. So you Google search M-E-L-E-K-A-I Joe, Melikai Joe. M E L E K A I M E L E K A I say it with me M E L E K A I M E L E K A Y why because I love you <laughs> okay oh man I know yeah okay corny corny whatever but right so but but you can find your stuff in just about any uh, streaming site right like anything from iTunes to uh, uh, you know to whatever yeah, all the typical places you can find it. The only thing is you have to spell it correctly. Right. Okay. Hence the M-E-L-E-K-A-I. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, we're getting hey, ready. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tell me if you didn't think about that or dream about that tonight. <laughs> yeah, I heard that, man. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess we're getting ready to watch a video from you in just a minute. I guess it's called Puppet Master. Uh, is there a story behind that? Because originally I thought that was a Metallica song, you know, uh, but I guess that was Master of Puppets, I guess. But <laughs> but maybe you can... Could... Hey, hey, let's just, let's see if it even sounds the same. I, I'm sure their <laughs> version sounds a whole lot better. <laughs> well, well, I did hear the song. I didn't really hear any uh, connections to that, but uh, I figured maybe it was related to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, uh, well, I mean, listen to the story. And then afterwards, you tell me what you think it, it, it's about. It's all about art. If you're an artist, it's all about artistry and interpretation anyway, you know. And so one of the things that you would like about a song is either you could relate to it or it creates a vision or a feeling or an emotion for you. And so if you're listening to this song, what type of emotion does it bring for you? You know, mm -hmm. what does the story, what, what, the, what am I saying? Well, well, since it's a story, why don't you tell us a little bit about the story about behind the song? Is there something that uh, you think we would like about it? Well, it's about control and it's about being able to manipulate. You ever hear of Dale Carnegie, how to win friends, friends mm -hmm. and influence people? Yeah. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of on that vein. Mm -hmm. Being a salesman, being a, being a, a politician, being, it, it's, it's, but it's not really to slander anybody. It's just the reality that we all know. Okay. Okay, <laughs> well, we're gonna watch that in just a minute, but uh, I think that's all we need for now, Malachi Joe, and we thank you for coming on the show. We'd love to have you back sometime if you got anything new to plug for us. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. And here is uh, Puppet Master right here on Palm Ash TV by Malachi Joe. So don't go away. We'll be right back. The Puppet Master. <laughs> Yo, on to train wreck, you guys out there. Hope you're doing well, and uh, see you soon. Hope we can get some live jams on. All right, take care. Little man 
the ticket shop Never has time to play He's very busy Making things out of steel, wood and clay But don't pay attention to the man behind the screen He's just there for the profit and share Attention to the man behind the screen.